been frozen out. Facing an extinction level event. We don't fight this fight right now. You're not going to have black on you. Folks, uh, we have been talking for years about the lack of funding that Black-owned media is receiving from the advertising industry. But it's not just the general market. It's also the federal government. Folks, $322 billion is spent every single year on advertising in the United States. On the general market, run by largely these white uh, advertising companies, Black-owned black media gets anywhere from 0.5 to 1%. Now, you would think we would be doing better when it comes to the federal government when the fact of the matter is that it's not the case. Uh, the General Accounting Office did a study at the behest of Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton uh, in 2018. It showed that over a five-year period, $5 billion was spent by the federal government. Black-owned media got $51 million out of the $5 billion. Well, last year, when we were in Tulsa for the 100th anniversary of the race riots, I was talking about this very issue with uh, members of Congress, uh, Barbara Lee and Hank Johnson, and Representative Johnson said, let's do something about that. And so uh, his staff has been working on this over the last nine months. They put out this letter, sent it to President uh, Joe Biden, asking them uh, to take advantage of an executive order that President Bill Clinton signed in when he was president called, one, called Executive Order 131. 170. He'll tell us more about this. But one of the things that we saw is that black owned media did not get our fair share of dollars when it came to census money or COVID money. Joining us right now is Congressman Johnson from Georgia. Congressman, glad to have you on the show. Um, you know, when we were talking about this in Tulsa, when you went back and got with your staff, I mean, y'all saw the stark difference when it comes to the dollars. And here we stand in 2022. Last year, President Biden talked about uh, race and equity. Uh, we met with Susan Rice about this very issue in the first 60 days they were in the White House. And this continues to be an issue that black owned media faces. Well, I tell you, uh, Roland, when we were out in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, you were out there covering uh, what was going on as we commemorated the 100 year anniversary of the Tulsa race massacre, a story that has been withheld from us uh, and withheld from everyone in this country uh, since it happened. Uh, you out there covering it along with other black owned media. And, um, and, it, and you mentioned to me the fact that, you know, out of all of the spending that the federal government is doing that Black media and advertising companies are getting 1% of that money. We're talking billions of dollars being spent by our federal government. It, it, was, um, it, it was a stark reminder of the fact that systemic racism exists in this country. That was just a classic uh, example of systemic racism in the dealings of the federal government in so far as spending with black owned uh, firms is concerned. And so, you know, having been awakened to that reality, as we talked uh, amongst ourselves, Roland, as we had a lot of fun about uh, fraternities and which fraternity was the greatest fraternity, uh, we were still having serious discussions about um, how we can bring equity into this situation for our people. A hundred years after Tulsa, and we're being massacred uh, in terms of uh, spending uh, federal dollars, uh, that's something that has to come to an end. So Barbara Lee, uh, Eleanor Holmes Norton, and myself came together. And um, as a result of our efforts, we have um, sent a letter to the administration. 38 uh, people signed on to that uh, letter. And that letter is um, demanding that we get some information about the spending on the CARES Act money, spending on the, um, on the COVID relief uh, funds from, uh, from uh, the American Rescue Plan. And uh, we, wanna know, we want the administration and we want America to see for themselves the disparity in equity that we are experiencing with this uh, federal dollars being spent for, for advertising in our communities. We don't, people like you, Roland, who are out here covering our issues 
and you know how to reach us, uh, you're not getting the money. I, I'll give you a perfect this, example. Let's just bring it to Tulsa for instance. Here's what people don't realize. There was no one sponsoring us to go to Tulsa to cover that. There was no company. There was no group. It cost, it cost me about $25,000. We spent six days in Tulsa. So to drive our Sprinter down, our driver security, the staff, hotels, per diem, all of those things, that's $25,000. Yesterday, I was on Air Force, Air Force Two with Vice President Kamala Harris covering Selma, okay? Now, people don't realize when you fly on Air Force Two, we have to pay the equivalent of a, of a first-class ticket. That's like, it, that's, that's, that's a, a big expense, Roland. Right, right. yesterday, 1,600, I'm going to give you the number. like a charter flight. It was 1,000, I need everybody listening, it was 1,000, I'm going to be charged, $1,632, in addition to the cost of the meals, it wasn't like it was a major meal, but in addition to the meals. And so there are other costs. So it's probably going to cost me around $2,000 to make that trip. When we talk about most black-owned media, we can't do that every week. We can't do that. And so guess what happens? We don't cover it. Yesterday, not one major network congressman covered the entire Selma event. They, some Not people only one. carried her speech Network. on the Black Star Network. We covered the entire event, all 17 speeches, including the walk across the bridge. That's why when we get frozen out of the dollars, we can't cover this kind of stuff. And you know what, Roland? When, when people talk about the rise in crime and they're afraid of the black males and uh, what is going on, you know, nobody has any hope about the future. Well, the story that mainstream media tells us about ourselves, about ourselves, teaches us to hate ourselves, to not value our own lives. And we don't get the story about what our forefathers have done. And so we don't get the images that you, as a black man, would project to us being the owner of a media outlet. And so when we snuff out the ability of people like you to cover us, then we end up with the kinds of results that we're seeing uh, on the streets uh, of this nation, across the nation. And so at the same time, Roland, if, if you were being adequately uh, used as a source to get information out by the federal government, if you were able to get honest information out to people, you would be able to employ some of these black men who are running around out here who don't have anything, Precisely. no, no uh, hope about the future. Precisely. And so this is a holistic uh, issue that we're dealing with. It is the epitome of systemic racism and show me the money. That's that's what it's all about. And, and here's show the deal, Congressman, and this is the thing here. It's now it's show, it's show me specifically, because here's what they're doing. They're sending the money to black targeted media. The, that's not black owned. There's, look, when it comes to the digital side, they send the money to Complex. BuzzFeed owns them. They're sending it to BET. That's going to Viacom CBS. They're sending it to, they're sending it to white owned media companies. And then, let me tell you what they did. We had Congressman Stephen Horsford on this show talking about the census money. He was over the census task force for the CBC. Young and Rubicam, who had the contract, told him point blank they were not taking out any census ads in any print publications with a circulation of 50,000 or less. That is 98% of all black newspapers. And so they couldn't even get census dollars. Now, you should take out ads everywhere because you're trying to count everybody. But no, they didn't want to do it. I, I applied on their portal. Five months, four months, they totally ignored us. I had to call them out on the show. And so what we're seeing is we tried when it came to COVID money. We Forrest Marsh, the ad agency that got the big contract, talked to them, sent the proposal, came back. Oh, sorry, all the money has been spent. But I'm seeing ads run left and right. Yet we were one of the most impacted groups when it came to COVID. And so this happens. And so, Congressman, they can't even use a lie because they tried it. They can't use a lie. Well, Roland, you don't have the numbers. Got the numbers. They can't say you don't have the reach. 
got to reach. We, 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 we meet all of the deals, but they systematically ignore black-owned media. And yeah, Urban One might get some money, maybe uh, a couple of other black uh, outlets. They might call Essence. I'm talking about the pool has to be larger. Yes, it does. You have to go after you have to go after this thing on a micro level. There's no reason at all to exclude the smaller entities that are more nimble and are closer to the people. There's no need to exclude them because you uh, of your administrative issues. Go ahead and open up a pot of money for the uh, smaller guys to get in there and, and compete and win those dollars, do for your mid-sized companies and do something for your larger companies. But we, as a people, have to have our businesses involved on every level. And the federal government, quite frankly, Roland, uh, owes this to us. When you talk about reparation, folks get scared. Folks don't want to hear about that. Uh, but it is it is something that this nation owes to us as a people. And the first thing that they have to do uh, is to recognize the truth of our reality living in America today with the vestiges of slavery and discrimination still uh, at work in our lives 24-7 on a granular level. The, the majority community has to understand that, has to be confronted with that reality, and has to accept that reality. And the truth hurts, but you'll never have, um, you'll never have um, uh, freedom and prosperity in this country for all unless you confront the truth. Yep. And uh, that is what we're doing. We had a meeting today, uh, a group of uh, us in the CBC, the CBC executive board, uh, under the leadership of our uh, brilliant chairwoman, chairwoman uh, Joyce Beatty. We sat down and spoke with uh, the president and his advisors about a lot of issues, including uh, this issue of media and advertising companies being black media and advertising companies being cut out of, of uh, the flow of federal revenues. We talked about that. Uh, we talked about the president reinstating uh, President Clinton's executive order that you referred to as executive order 13170, which uh, mandated the inclusion of minority business enterprises. And when Republicans took office, they uh, rescinded uh, the uh, executive order, only for it to be uh, put back in place by President Obama and then rescinded again by Trump. And now it's time for uh, President Biden to reinstate that uh, executive order. But to actually go further, Roland, because right. we, know, we know all of the tricks that have been used historically to funnel money into the hands of the major firms and wink at them and say that you are required to spend this money with uh, black-owned firms. And then what they do is spend it with, with white-owned firms that, uh, that seemingly or supposedly are supposed to be getting the word out to to the black firms and then the uh, to the black people, and then the message Roland doesn't get out because they don't know how to get to us. Precisely, they, speak, they don't speak to us in the way that we like to be spoken to, and they don't give it to us in the ways that we like to have it. And so those are things. It's no secret. They just are used to doing business uh, for right. the mainstream and uh, don't really care to learn about how we receive our information. That's and right. so, therefore, we suffer, and they suffer too, Roland, because we're all in the same boat together. Now look, I know you have to go vote, but here's a, here, I, but I'm trying to... The reason I'm giving people numbers so they understand, to everybody who's watching and listening, there is not a single black-owned media company that has a con correspondent that covers Congress. So when the CBC comes out of their weekly meeting on Wednesday and the media is out there, there is not a single person from black-owned media. In the, at the White House, Ebony McMorris was with American Urban Radio Network. Uh, April Ryan works for uh, Byron Allen's The Grio. That's it at the White House. And I said this to Congresswoman Joyce Beatty, and I said to numerous other members, 
if, with a billion dollars being spent, imagine if black-owned media got 10% of the billion, that means that black-owned media would get 100 million. Let's say I got 2%, let's say I got 2 million of the 100 million, okay? That's 2%, that, that's 2%. Let's just say 2% of the 100 million. Congressman, in 60 days, I could have three people hired, three African-Americans hired to cover the CBC. And so when you talk about people say, man, I don't know what the CBC doing, because white media don't cover the CBC. They don't cover the issues because we simply can't afford to pay somebody eighty to $100,000 to solely cover Congress. We simply don't have the money because the advertising agencies and the companies who make excuses will not spend the dollars. And so, we, as Frederick Douglass said, we ain't got no choice but to call them out. Roland, Final when, word, the go ahead. Little, when the little children are on the set watching you handle your business in a professional way, it gives them an idea that, hey, I can do that one day. I'd like to do that. Not just do it. Maybe I can I own will, it. I was that's right. I can own so it. If they can see it, they can be it. But if they don't see it, then we end up lost in the, in the desert, in the darkness. That's where our children are today. That's why we're suffering uh, from uh, the crime that uh, is out there. Uh, let's all wake up, Roland, realize and uh, deal honestly with the facts, and then let's move forward with uh, a, a plan to repair the damage that we have been sustaining for uh, the last 401 years since we've been in this country, 402 years. Well, look, uh, I hope after y'all meeting, the, the White House moves on this, is aggressive with this, reinstates Executive Order 13170. Uh, Congressman Hank Johnson, uh, we appreciate it. We're going to keep hey, covering Roland, this. Yes, sir. Can, can I tell your audience, we're going uh, to be on Hank, Rep. Hank Johnson on my Instagram page. You and I on uh, Saturday, I believe it's four o'clock. So y'all tune in for that. We're gonna have some more discussion. Yes, about sir. This and other issues. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you so very much for your leadership on this. Thank you, sir. Back to my uncle's video in just one moment. to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. I support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I got to defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own. A Black man <laughs> owns the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Wow. Rolling was amazing on that. Hey, Black, I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig?